record. Without any further ado, let's get right into tonight's time. So tonight we are going to be looking at the breath odd. But let us do a quick recap of what we have been looking at so far on saying there is aspects of God and, and how it relates to our marriages as we got Adam and Eve. On day one, we looked at the hand of God. We looked at the hand of God and we saw that the hand of God presented Eve to Adam. And today we still have access to the hand of God. Isaiah 41 10 tells us, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. On day two, we looked at the voice of God and we see that Adam and Eve, they heard the voice of God together in the garden. And we encourage our couples to ensure that you intentionally spend some time every day. And I pray that you have been doing that. Spend some time every day without the distraction of the cell phone. Spend some time every day with each other so that you can hear the voice of God together. John 10, 17 reminds us that my sheep listen to my voice. On day three, we looked at the eye of God. And he tried to hide from the all seeing eyes of God, but we cannot really escape God's eyes. And we see that there are four reasons why he watches us so closely. Jeremiah 23, 24, he asks, can any hide himself in secret places that I cannot see him? On day four, we looked at the heart of God. God knew what Adam's need was and he responded with a heart of care and compassion. And so today we have access to that same heart of compassion and love and mercy. Jonah 4.2 tells us that the Lord, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love and faithfulness. And so as we experience God's compassion, we are to be channels, couriers, and conduits of God's love and forgiveness to our spouse. As we experience God's forgiveness, we are to be the channels of that forgiveness to our spouse. And as we sow that, we will reap that from our spouses. We then looked at on day five, the face of God. And we see that we want to ensure that his face is turned towards us so that it can shine on us and save us as we stay away from sin and keep our hearts and lives free from sin. On day six, we looked at the feet of God. Adam and Eve heard the sound of God's approach. Deuteronomy 33.3 reminds us that he truly loves us. All his holy ones are in his hand and sitting at his feet, we receive his instruction. So we sit at his feet to learn. That's one of the things we do with the feet of God. Last night, we had a powerful session on Satan's attack plan for the family, the mind of God. And we see where the enemy tries to defeat us and break down the family structure through attacking our minds in various ways. And we thank God for that session that we had last night. Today, we are looking at the breath of God, the breath of God. Genesis 2, 7 tells us, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man be a living soul. In this season that we're in, we are so mindful of the fact that we cannot take life for granted. We can't take life for granted. We cannot assume that we're going to be here tomorrow. We, are, we, we must be so thankful to God when we get up in the morning that he has spared our lives to see another day. And, and to, to ask that we fulfill purpose, we must ensure that every day we fulfill God's purpose on this earth. The breath of God is associated with life, understanding, wind, the Holy Spirit, and destruction. So let's look at life. Job 33, 4 tells us, the Spirit of God has made me the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The breath that we breathe has come from God. It is the Spirit of God. It is the breath of the Almighty that we breathe. You know, just taking a deep breath. That is the breath of the Almighty. 
those who have passed away no longer have the ability to breathe in the breath of the Almighty. And so let's not take it for granted. The second thing that the breath of God is associated with in scripture is giving understanding. Job 32 verse 8 says, but it is the spirit in a man, the breath of the Almighty, that gives him understanding, that makes him intelligent. Don't forget that. The breath of the Almighty makes us intelligent. The third thing it's associated with is wind. Isaiah 40 verses 67 tells us all people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fail because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Frail humans we are here today and gone tomorrow. The Holy Spirit is the fourth thing that the breath of God is associated with. Uh, in John 20, 22, he said, and with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So four things that the breath of God is associated with. There are others, but we are looking at four today. Life, giving understanding, wind, and the Holy Spirit. As I outline in my book, What a God, the Anatomy of the Almighty, the understanding of the anatomy of God enhances our prayer journey, our prayer life. You see, when we understand what each aspect of the anatomy addresses, we can more intentionally appropriate that aspect in our prayer life. So this aspect is true of the breath of God, and it is an excellent revelation for your prayer life. Let us look quickly at it. There are three things that, according to scripture, the breath of God deals with. The first one is political situations. Isaiah 40, 23 to 24, it says, he brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them, political leaders, and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. So when we pray, it's not please deal with this political situation. Please come in and, 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 and take control of what is happening. It is Holy Spirit, blow like a whirlwind on this political situation. That is what we have access to as believers, to specifically pray concerning addressing and, and, and applying the anatomy, the specific anatomy to the political situation that we face in our nations, in our region. The second thing that the breath of God deals with is unjust situations. Isaiah 59, 15 to 21, truth is nowhere to be found. The Lord looked and he was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was not one to intervene. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. And how was he going to do that? He is going to come like a pent up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. Hallelujah. So it's not just when you see unjust injustice happening around you. It's not just, oh God, you know, this is, you know, Lord, we come against it in the name of Jesus and we pray and we pray. It is Holy Spirit blow like a pent up flood over this unjust situations, specific requests using specific aspects of God's anatomy to address specific situations. The third situation, difficult situations, and we all sometimes face difficult situations in our lives. And in Psalm 1815, it gives us an account of how the breath of God addressed Then at your command, O Lord, at the blasts of your breath of the sea could be seen and the foundations of the earth were laid bare at the blast of his breath whatever was in the way whatever was struck with a blast of his breath one last not blow and blow one blast of his breath the bottom of the sea could be seen and the foundations of the earth were laid bare he reached down 
He drew me out deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from those who hated me and were too strong for me. Difficult situation. We also see in Exodus another aspect where God addresses difficult situations. The story, the, the same account of the, 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 the rescue of the children of Israel when Pharaoh was chasing them. By the blast of your nostrils, waters piled up. The surging was firm by the deep waters congealed the heart of the sea. Exodus 15. We can look at that verses 8 through 10. So God wants not only to make a way for you, but whatever he creates to take care of what is in front of you will also take care of what is behind you. What an amazing God. Therefore, what magnitude of breath do you want God to breathe on your difficult situations? What, what magnitude do you want to ask him? What, what level, category, hurricane you want to ask God to handle for your, for your difficult situation? You know, Father, breathe like a category 10 hurricane, this difficult situation. When we looked at the breath of God, there was a young woman who worked in a bank and she had gone through this lesson with the breath of God. And while at work, she had a client who was deciding whether or not to take a loan. She was a loans officer. And of course, you know, you get paid based on you know, the, the number of the, the sales that come in. She needed to meet a certain quota. And it was a big client. It was a client with a, with a, with a huge amount. And he was indecisive whether or not to take the loan. And eventually, you know, he, he said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to do this today. And she remembered, the Lord reminded her about the lesson she had on the breath of God. And she said, Holy Spirit, breathe breath of God on this difficult situation. And she, he just turned around and he said, you know what? Let's do this today. So I'm saying to you, when, you, when, you, when, when the revelation that God gives to you, apply it into your lives. The Lord wants to breathe into your difficult situations. So when we pray, ask the breath of God to breathe like a whirlwind. We are here tonight to transact some business with the master designer of marriage, with the minister of reconciliation and with our precious Holy Spirit. A great exchange is going to take place on this altar tonight. We're going to exchange deadness for life. We are going to exchange dryness for wetness. We are going to exchange despair for hope. The Lord, the facilitators are here to exchange coldness for intimacy. The Lord is here to exchange distraction for focus. Are you ready to receive what God wants to do tonight? Position yourself to wait on him. We won't be in a rush tonight. We want to receive from him tonight. We want to receive for our marriages. So identify tonight what area in your marriage needs God's resuscitation, needs his restoration, needs renewal. The Lord is going to move so powerfully that even if you are not married, you can tap into this restoration anointing tonight for any dry, parched area of your life. You can exchange prayerlessness for passionate prayer. Whatever it is you want to exchange tonight on this altar, I want you to identify it and like the woman with the issue of blood, I want you to press in. Or like the man with the changing of the water, I want you to have that desire to, to step in when the water is touched. The Lord asked, can these bones live again? Now, they were not only bones. And remember, a bone, when you see a bone, a bone in itself is an indication of the absence of life. If you're holding a bone in your hand, it means that whosever bone it was is no longer alive. So just the fact of a bone, it means that life is gone. So the bones were dried. So that's an indication that life had been absent and was beyond the hope of reconnecting. 
Not only did the bones exist and that they were dry, they were discarded, they were scattered. Scattered bones, they mean no hope of recovery. This is definitely a classic case of no hope. All hope is gone. Before we begin our prophetic intercession tonight, let me give you some additional insights into bones as called from uh, my book, uh, chapter one of my book, What's a Savior? The Anatomy of the Almighty, which looks at the bone of God. They say that bones give indication of one's emotional state. If we could get a scan of our bones today, what would they tell us about the emotions that you are currently experiencing? What emotions are you keeping hidden from even those very ones close to you? Are you having a dry bone experience? Is there a situation in your life that seems hopeless, sun bleached and dried up? Ask yourself tonight, can my business live again? Yes, it can. Can my marriage live again? Yes, it can. Can my prayer life live again? Yes, it can. What is a specific dry area in your life that you want God to pour into? You know, what is your need? Identify the need so that when the Holy Spirit comes, you can present to him the need that you have. Do you need God's breath to enter your situation so that it will come to life, be resuscitated? Do you need God to cover a relationship that has gone sour so that you can connect again? Probably need to experience forgiveness, reconciliation. Do you need things to come together in your marriage so that there is true unity once again, spiritual unity, physical unity, emotional unity? The Lord is saying to you, you have the authority. As Ezekiel did, prophesy. Open your mouth and speak life into whatever is dead. Tonight, your hope for your marriage may be like a broken blade of, of grass, about to fall off. But the Lord says that a bruised reed he will not break. So it doesn't matter how fragile you think it is. God is able to keep you. Your hope for intimacy to be restored is probably like a candle wick that's about to be snuffed out. But the Lord says, hallelujah, that a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. Hallelujah. You may not have strength to make any further effort for your marriage. You have tried and tried and nothing worked. Well, tonight, tonight, we have some midwives and some doctors here who are going to help us push through this passage all the lord requires is your faith in him that he can do this for you god says he's here to restore marriages god says he's here to sweeten marriages that's the word he used he's here to restore and sweeten marriages all he wants is your faith in him you remember that first night when we looked at the hand of god don't give up on god because he has not given up on you so while, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, while the song is being played, I want you to identify exactly what dry area in your life, your marriage, your relationship, wherever in life, you need it to be restored. Tell the Lord exactly how you feel and ask him for your help as we go through this process tonight of seeking the Lord's help in bringing restoration into some dry, scattered bones in our lives. So let's prepare our hearts for prayer. God bless you. Would you just slip one hand up? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breathe life again, breath of God. Are we ready? Hallelujah. Let's extend our faith tonight as we present these areas to God. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 4 says, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know, 
And he said to me, and that is what we're going to do tonight, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. We are going to prophesy tonight over these dry bones to hear. They need to, first of all, be able to hear before we can prophesy other things. So we're going to pray tonight that these dry bones of our marriages or lives will hear the word of the Lord. So Olivia, over to you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we glorify your name, God. Lord, we honor you, O oh God. Father, we magnify you, O oh God. Father, we worship you, O oh God, and we lift you up, O oh ancient of days. We lift you up, monarch of the universe. Oh God, we lift you up, giver of life. And we glorify your most holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let the bones live again. Let them live again. Let them live again. Breathe again. Breathe again. Hallelujah, God. Breathe again tonight, Father. Father, tonight we thank you for your awesome design of the ear, oh God. Lord, we thank you that the ear is a receptor for song and vibrations. Father, we thank you, oh God, that it is an organ of detecting gravity and assisting balance, oh God. Father, we thank you that you formed it and you fashioned the ear by, oh God, God, your very hand. Father, you designed it, oh God, to hear your word. And so tonight, God, we speak alignment to the ear in every marriage, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would awaken every dry bone, oh God, in the ears of every marriage represented here tonight in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we ask that you would cut off and cancel every ear infection, oh God, in our marriages in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would break down any unusual buildup of unnecessary wax, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you would heal, oh God, any malfunction against the ear, oh God, in our marriages in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal every sin sick ear, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we ask that you would bring balance and stability, oh God, Father, to the ear, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Realign the ear, oh God, to the sound of your voice, oh God, to your words. Realign the ear, oh God, to hearing your words afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy God, we ask that you would remove every foreign object that has been lodged within the ear, oh God, preventing our marriages from hearing you, from responding oh God to you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you would filter, you would cleanse, you would remove any filth, garbage, oh God. Father, any ungodly counsel that has corrupted, oh God, our sense of judgment. Father, from listening, from hearing, oh God. Father, from carrying out your orders, oh God, your will in our marriage. Oh God, Father, tonight we ask for your divine intervention. And so God, we prophesy, oh God, to the peanut or the outer ear in every marriage tonight in the name of Jesus. We command the ears to be open. Father, we command it, oh God, to collect and to carry every song wave from your word that will be speaking into it, oh God, into the body in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we prophesy, oh God, to the song waves, oh God, that are located, oh God, in the tympanic, oh God, or the eardrum. Father, we command it to vibrate, oh God, and to hear the word of the Lord. Oh ear, hear the word of the Lord. God, tonight we prophesy to the ossicles in every marriage. We prophesy, oh God, to the malleus and the incas, oh God, to the stapes. We command them to arise, oh God, and to transmit 
admit the word of God into the inner ear, into the auditory nerve to be dispatched, oh God, to the brain, oh God, into the heart in the name of Jesus. God, we speak to every other part that makes up the ear. We speak to the cochlea, oh God. We speak, oh God, to the tympanic membrane, oh God. We speak, Father God, to the auditory tube, oh God. God. Father, we speak, oh God, to the vestibular apparatus. We speak to the semicircular canals in the name of Jesus, and we command them to be open, oh God. We command them, oh God, to function in unity. We prophesy to them, dear God, Father, that they shall arise, that they shall live, and they shall function, oh God, in the way that you have created them, oh God. Lord, we speak, oh God, to the sensory cells, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we speak life. We speak obedience to your word. We speak obedience to your will, oh God. Father, we prophesy to the ear and we say receive the resurrection power of almighty God into every part, every minute, intricate part of the ear to hear you, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now that the ears have been opened, we are now going to prophesy and command them to obey the word of the Lord. I'll replace the flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, hallelujah. With every move of the spirit, there's always a sound, hallelujah. And suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over. We are going to prophesy tonight to the dead, dry, scattered bones. Now that their ears have been opened, we're going to prophesy that they obey the voice of the Lord and come together and receive muscle, receive flesh, and receive a covering of skin. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We adore you, Lord. We exalt your Father. Lift you up, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the praise, all the adoration. Father, we worship you tonight, Lord Jesus, in the beauty of holiness. We thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you who have established this first institution of marriage is concerned with it, Lord Jesus Christ, and wants to see it grow from strength to strength. And Father, as we come tonight, Lord Jesus, and we are discussing, Lord God, your breath, your breath upon marriage, Lord Jesus, your breath upon every situation in marriages, Lord Father. Lord, we, we, the, the marriages have not heard persons, Lord Jesus, on this platform have now heard, Lord Jesus. The situations was prophesied to, and they can now hear, and now we are prophesying, Lord God, that they're not only here, but they will take it a step further by obeying the word, mighty God. And so we prophesy in those dead, dry, parched, lifeless situations, Lord Jesus, in marriages, that they will obey the voice of the Lord. They will obey you, mighty God. They will not only listen, but they will obey. They will do the things that you want them to do. And so, mighty God, we prophesy to every situation on this, that anybody on this platform will be experiencing right now. We prophesy to it, Lord Jesus Christ, that 
they will listen, Lord God, and that those situations, God, will be nullified in the name of Jesus Christ because it is your word. It is, it, it is your word that makes the difference in our lives. And so, Father, we prophesy to, 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 to the situations, Lord God, that would say that marriages cannot come back together because it is so far gone. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I say, obey the word of the Lord. This marriage will come back. This marriage will take life. This marriage will take take on flesh this marriage will come back in alignment to how god would want it to how god would have would have ordained it to be i i i speak to you marriage i i prophesy into every marriage this 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 night that you will obey you when you hear you will not only hear but you will obey the word of the lord that these situations that you're facing now will no longer be any deterrent in your way will no longer be any reason for you to say it's not going to come back again those Words will no more be a part of you because your marriage will come back. You will obey the word of the Lord. You will listen to what the Lord has to say, what the Lord is leading you to do. I prophesy, Lord Jesus Christ, into every situation, Lord God, that is that that that, that there is no 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 communication that is happening. I speak to communication in the lives, Lord Jesus, of every person on this platform that, Lord God, are married, Lord God, and, and there, there is this rift, Lord, I prophesy to it that communication will come back. You will obey the word of the Lord and communication will come back in the marriage. There will be life in the marriage. There will be speaking around the table in the marriage. I prophesy this in the name of the Lord. I prophesy that you will speak to your each other in the name of the Lord. I prophesy that you will hold hands together in the name Name of the Lord. I prophesy that you will go to church together. You will read the Bible to, to, together. You will discuss the things of the Lord together and communication will be paramount on the table together. You will speak about the things that you like and you do not like in the name of Jesus. You will now listen to each other. I prophesy in each life. I prophesy in each marriage that these marriages will take shape, will take form, and all the parched and sunburned situation in the marriages that you think will not come back. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy that it will take shape. I prophesy that it will come back. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, the love will rekindle again in these situations. You will hear the word of the Lord and you will listen. You will make the first move. You will open your mouths and you will speak life into your partner. You will speak life and not death into your partner. There shall be no more death in your marriages anymore. There will be life in your marriages. It will take on flesh. Blood will flow through your marriages once more. Your life will be a life of laughter, a life of sunshine now. It will go back to the place where you once knew your each other, when you used to look in your each other's each other eyes and you used to smile and you used to laugh it will come back it will come back hear ye the word of the lord tonight these marriages will come back in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and all those who have believed that it is far gone it is done it is over because of whatever situation tonight i speak 
speak to those lives. I speak to those situations. I speak to those individuals on this altar. And I said, obey the words of the Lord. The Lord is speaking to you tonight. The Lord is saying to you that it's not over until he says it's over and he has not said it is over. And so there is still room for improvement. There is still an opportunity, a window of opportunity to get back your life into shape, to be realigned that all the broken pieces, all the broken bones and the marriages can come back together. It doesn't matter how, how parched it had been, how powdery the situation may have been, how scattered it may have been. But this night I pray and I, and, and, and I speak into marriages and I speak into your life that it will come back. It will come back in the name of the Lord. All you have to do is to obey the word of the Lord. Obey the Lord, obey the Lord, obey the Lord, and do what he says you ought to do. Father, tonight we come against pride in the name of Jesus, and we shatter it out of every life in, on this platform. We shatter it, Lord. And we ask, Lord Jesus Christ, that humility will take place, Lord Jesus, and persons will come back to the place, Lord Jesus, where they ought to be. We'll ask for forgiveness as you would have spoken through them and to them and to the situations in their lives where they have gone wrong. They will ask for forgiveness. They will, they will admit, Lord Jesus, with their mouths. They will announce where they have gone wrong. And mighty God, they will listen. They will put off pride and self. And they will say, yes, I have done so. And I am sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Help them to understand, Lord oh God, that you can bring it back together. Oh God, just as all oh, you marry back to the backsliders, Lord, you will cause uh, this love affair to come back together again and let it feel as if it is a new marriage that is taken place with the same two persons. And so I prophesy in the lives, oh God of these, your children on the platform, Lord God. It is not over. It is not no over. It is not the end. No, it is not the end. It may seem like it's the end, but it's just what your eyes are telling you and what the flesh is saying to you, but it is not over. The spirit of God is moving. The breath of God is moving through your life situations now. And I, I prophesy that the situations will obey and hear the word of the Lord. You are wonderfully and beautifully made. You were brought together by God. You have come together as one and you will remain one as you obey the word of the Lord. Father, bless each, each and every marriage on this platform tonight that they may grow in strength and favor of you, mighty God, and that they will obey the words of the Lord as I give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for the presence of your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37, 6b says, I will put breath into you. Now that you have heard, you have received the skin, the muscles, the strength, etc. I will put breath into you and you shall live and know I am the Lord. And also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, come from the east, the west, the north and the south, O breath, and breathe on these that they may live. 
Hallelujah. We're going to prophesy to the bones that the wind and the breath will come together with life, with restoration, and with hope. Hallelujah. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. Declare that over your marriages. I will live. My marriage will live. My marriage will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it. Hallelujah, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. We magnify you. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing a work. Lord, we thank you. Oh, Raban de Rebesuku Robo Shata. Yeken de Rebesukundo Robo Kiara Baseke. Indin de Rebesuku Robo Shata. E Akandarabasoto. Father, you are doing a work, and we prophesy even as you have said. We prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. We call for the breath of God to come from the east, the west, the north, and the south, and to blow upon these lifeless bodies. Now, we speak to these bodies that are lifeless and we say come breath ruach of god come and blow upon these in the name of jesus in the name of jesus come wind of god come with life come with restoration come with hope Come to revitalize, come to resuscitate, come breathe upon these marriages that they may live. Breath of God from the four winds blow, blow wind of God. Your breath, your breath, the very breath of God, as you blew into Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, blow wind of God. Blow and bring to life uh, all that was considered lifeless. Yes, Lord, let the bones reconnect uh, and let life come. Let life come. We speak life, O oh, wind of God. O oh, wind of God. Come like a whirlwind from the four corners. Come in the name of Jesus. Blow, wind of God, blow. Blow, wind of God, blow. As the wind of God comes now. As the wind of God comes now, we hear the wind as it begins to come and it picks up momentum. Robo shata rapa kisa tara. Roku do robo shete rebe bebe be. Roku to robo shata la manda rabatsuku. Rika taraba seke nama. Isa kanda rabatsuku robo bobo bo yeke. Raba shata rabakundo robo sete. From the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Let the wind come and let the wind blow. 
breath of God from the four winds blow. Breathe life again on these dry bones. And we say, live again. Live again. Live every dead situation. Live in the name of Jesus. Every dead marriage. Live every dead business. Live every dead life. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. And we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. King of glory, King of days, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Ezekiel 37, 10b. And they lived, hallelujah, and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Before we receive that prophetic declaration over our marriage, that declaration to move, that declaration to be the army that God has called us to be, let us prepare our hearts as we listen and worship. Prepare your hearts, worship, worship. Take the time and worship as we listen to this song before we have our prophetic declarations tonight. Hallelujah. God, and we We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. For you are almighty God, the omnipotent God who does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or we can even think today and so lord even at this time as you have have brought life oh god as we have been healing we pray god the resurrection we pray oh god life oh god to, to the marriages oh god that you have touched today in the name of jesus we pray god Hallelujah, that, that you, you raise up, oh God, you raise up today, oh God, that, that, as a mighty army, God, oh God, the, the marriages and lies and, and relationships, oh God, in the name of Jesus today, oh God, hallelujah, we thank you, Father, for your intervention, we thank you, God, for your power today, God, we know, Lord God, that that that, that 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 you have that there's a movement today that there is movement there is a shaking that there is a moving oh glory to god the hallelujah that, uh, that there's a healing that there's reconciliation oh god that there is restoration oh god that there is revival in lives oh god hallelujah there is oh god revitalization again we declare in the name of Jesus, that they shall continue to live, that they shall continue to, oh God, to rise up, that they shall continue to be healed, oh God, that they shall no longer, oh God, that this marriage shall no longer go, oh God, in the doldrums, but that they shall continue to live, that they shall continue, oh God, to, to, to excel, in the name of Jesus, to succeed in the name of Jesus, as you have healed in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every work of the enemy, oh God, that will seek to, hallelujah, that to, to, uh, to, to uh, disturb, uh, uh, the, the, oh God, uh, to separate, oh glory to God, every plan, God, we bring to naught in the name of Jesus and declare the life of God. We declare the life of God in these marriages today. In every marriage, oh, glory to God. That uh, within, oh God, a uh, 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 band today, within a uh, uh, voice today, we declare, oh God, a mighty moving, a mighty moving. Oh Lord God, we speak, oh God, a mighty moving in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, God. Oh, holy God, thanking you, oh God, for your greatness and what you're doing today, Lord God, hallelujah. Well, what you have done today and establishing order, development, maturity, and life, oh, glory to God, 
in these marriages today, with these lies today. Oh God, that we declare, God, that these, oh God, marriages, oh God, hallelujah, that you have, ex oh God, that you have touched today, oh God, will be a light and a testimony of your power, oh glory to God, to other marriages, to other lives, oh God, so that hope will continue, oh God, to rise in others in the name of Jesus, that they would know the God, hallelujah, who is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, that they too would experience, oh God, reconciliation, healing, oh God, even when they feel, oh God, that, it, that this is it, they are at the end, that they would know, oh God, the God who created the universe, hallelujah, to turn and to bring life to their marriages in the name of Jesus. So everyone today, oh glory to God, we defeat, oh God, that which had created Oh God, the dryness, oh God, hallelujah, that it shall no ever return, oh God, to the cause and to, the, to, to that which have created, oh God, the issues and brought the deadness. Oh my God, we declare in the name of Jesus and we prophesy that they shall no longer ever return to their past and to, oh God, and to the history that brought them into this place, but that there be a moving forward, that there be, oh God, a, 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 a pressing and a looking and a constantly looking forward their God. Hallelujah. That there be a looking forward, that there be a moving forward their God in the name of Jesus. So God, arise today. Uh, hallelujah. As you have arisen, Lord God, let your glory fill. And God, we know when your glory fills, God, that there's going to be, oh God, fruitfulness. And so we declare, God, in the name of Jesus, that in, oh God, there be fruitfulness, that there be fruitfulness. Oh, glory to God, that there be fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. There be fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, oh God, hallelujah, that was looking for seed and have struggled to get seed, oh God, to have started to bring forth, oh God, we declare and prophesy in the name of Jesus that your pain shall be no more, but that you shall bring forth in the name of Jesus. We declare today that in the name of Jesus, that which have hindered and hurt you and pained you, it shall, is, it is no more, and that you are healed today in the name of Jesus, that you shall bring forth fruit in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and that you shall have life, and that you shall experience the abundant life in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you, hallelujah, for what you have done and what you are doing and what you're establishing in these lives today, God. We magnify your name, God, and give glory and honor to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.